Hi and welcome to another quick demonstration of the HP UBA or User Behavior Analytics solution. Uh, today I'm actually going to run into uh, run through a, a very simple demonstration around uh, the users, the identities and, and what we're doing as part of that. So uh, without further ado I'll log into the system and start having a look and, and uh, understand how we're looking at this identity and the, and the actual person and users behind all of this activity as well. So, first off, we can see there's a, a whole load of information in here. We can see, in fact, that there's actually a, uh, over 700 uh, particular identities already d assigned into this particular uh, demo system. Uh, of course, the solution itself will support well over hundreds of thousands of, of identities. But the important thing here is, is that if I should just go into this particular user, Mr. Harry Ogwa, uh, I can go in and I can see the relevant data about that particular uh, identity. The important thing here is, is that we're getting this information from uh, probably some form of identity management system. So it could be uh, Active Directory, it could be Oracle IDM, it could be a number of other systems. It could even be solutions such as SalesPoint, SailPoint, sorry, uh, or WaveSet. Uh, but there's lots of other solutions, even down to individual files. But the important thing here is we're piecing together information around the actual person uh, that we do want to be doing this this monitoring around. So we're getting some generic information like uh, the the name of the individual the employee ID for example the title the role the division and other bits of information as well we could also pull in and bring together concatenate a lot of this data from other systems as well so we could actually pull in some contact information so this possibly has come from some form of uh, HR system so we've pieced that da data together accordingly what we're also doing is is tracking a lot of this data as well so we can understand the employment history if we want to because there might be something relevant with regards to for example something like termination date that we want to ensure that uh, users and identities are not used after a certain time for example we're also maintaining a change history of this data too so uh, as data changes of that particular individual and identity over time we're tracking and understanding all that data the important thing here is is that you, you, we should be noting that this is not just uh, around the username, but this is actually the identity, and that's mapping to a number of different usernames that could be used on different systems. And uh, we'll dig into that as we're going through this very brief demonstration. Um, what we can see is uh, the whole idea of the solution is to focus on what we call risk. So we're bubbling up risk with a number of activities and policies and behaviors. And we can actually jump in and see that risk uh, for this particular user very, very quickly indeed. And the important thing is that we, we expect to see a number of things uh, that would be triggered against that particular identity and the user activity that they use. But the point is that the, it adds together to provide a composite risk score over everything here. So we can actually see that this is a very high risk score we can see that it's actually considered to be critical so we can look and dig into this information specifically. So what we can do is we can actually just click and go into this data itself. So we can click and view what's actually triggered here. So in this particular case, we can see that it's a misuse activity frequency higher than baseline behavior. So what's actually occurred here is a number of things. If we click and go in this, that we understand that the baseline of activity in this particular case is, is one. Uh, but in this particular interval, we've seen 74 things occur. In fact, actually, we can even dig in and view the violations directly. So we can see that this is log on information. In fact, actually, again, you can expand that further uh, and, and see the information with regards to some of these events to uh, with regards to what's going on so what's actually occurring is uh, typically we only see one log on as, as a baseline within a period but we've seen 74 so that's very suspicious and accordingly we score that uh, of, of a compound information what we can do is we can actually look at this information as well in a bit more detail using what we call the investigation workbench. So we can actually just click on that, it opens up a fresh tab, uh, and we can see some information. We can see that this is Harry, this particular account that's been used uh, on a particular server uh, that we've actually looked at as well. So we can start to understand a little bit more. Now, I'm actually going to come back to that investigation workbench later just to show some of the additional power and, and capability that we have within that. So jumping back to the individual again for a second, uh, what we can do is we can actually look at some of the other uh, aspects of what's going on. What we can do is we can monitor based on what we call peer group. So we could build up, uh, either define these peer groups ourselves, or we can actually have these created by the system for us based on some aspect or attribute of the identity in question. It could be on the division they're in. It could be the manager that they have, or it could even be the job title that they have as well. Uh, or it could be another aspect that we want to define as part of that. But these are common 
groups that would be used to identify unusual behavior between the individual peers that are in that group itself. So we can see that there's only one person has a member uh, as a member of that particular peer, uh, but there's five members for this particular peer group, which is the manager, and there's 50 people in this particular group itself, which is information risk. So we can start to compare activities accordingly. What we can do is actually look at some of the activity themselves uh, and actually understand what's going on. So we can see account activity for this particular user and we can actually jump back through time and see some of this information and oh this is a bit unusual. We can see there's a bit of a spike here uh, based on usual activity that we see. In fact actually we can click on an individual uh, line here and look at the underlying events that have been uh, been used as part of this. We can actually see there's lots of Windows events, uh, logons and log offs accordingly and again uh, we can look at some of the information with regards to that too. So that's really quite a, a powerful way of just looking at the data, looking at the activities, uh, looking at the usernames that have been used by this identif uh, identity, in this case Mr. Harry Ogwa, on these different systems accordingly. But what we're doing here is we're talking about a, a behavioral profile, a set of baselines that have been defined. So we can actually jump into that specifically. And we can see that this particular uh, identity has a, a particular user account and he's been accessing three different servers here uh, specifically. So we can see this Active Directory domain controller machines. So we can click on one of those and we can actually dig into uh, what's going on with regards to the, the behavior profiling. So we can see that there is a, a baseline that's been defined. We can see that there's an absolute minimum and absolute maximum frequency but the important thing is that we as part of this baseline we've understood that there are a couple of clusters as part of this so we've seen that there is something that's been a overall average uh, and baseline but we've also seen that something very unusual has occurred and that's what's uh, triggered some of the other unusual activities specifically that uh, windows by activity uh, behavior trigger that we saw earlier on so we've we've seen some of that aspect we've seen some of that uh, information around the behavior and the monitoring access looking at it from the identity's point of view uh, from that. What I'm just going to quickly finally do is just dig into uh, some of the users for a second uh, and this particular user going back to, to Harry to just look at this investigation workbench again just to uh, show additionally what we can base some of this monitoring and investigation on. So we can see that there's some data here. Let me just take this back to the start of uh, January for this year, uh, look at the data accordingly because there's going to be much more information for me to see as part of this. So I could look at lots of information, I could look at the accounts that they've used, in this case we can we know that there's three, three separate machines they've logged into, uh, we could look at uh, some of the peer groups that they've been a, uh, a member of as well which we looked at earlier. Uh, what we could also do even look at the vi uh, policies that have violated as well. So in this case we know that they're going to be terminated, they've had a bad performance review and some of this unusual activity based on Windows events as well. So that's why their, their overall score is actually uh, a compound very very high indeed. What we can also do is we can actually dig into what network addresses they've had over that particular period of time. So this is over this extended period here. We can see there's a large number of uh, IP addresses they've had as well because we're tracking this data based on the identity. And that's the important thing here is this is on the identity, not on the IP address, not on the network activity here. So we're building up that view of what's going on. And then from there, we can actually start to look at uh, what did they do and what did they use as part of that. So we can actually look at the actual accounts that they used on that IP address at that particular time and now we can start to dig into some of the individual events as well. So we can even look at the individual events that actually are being triggered as part of this. So suddenly it becomes a very powerful way to pivot on the data importantly around the identity and the individual that we want to do the investigation. And it then becomes a very powerful tool to understand what's going on when we have a very high risk score that allows us then to understand what have they done and how have they broken various procedures, policies and behavioral controls. So, anyway, that's a very quick uh, introduction and demonstration of the HP UBA solution, and I hope you find it useful. Thank you very much.